Oh, I'm a total goof, all right? There is more to the world's biggest band than just music. Metallica created a worldwide movement with a fan base so passionate they refer to it as the family. Because everyone and anyone is allowed in the Metallica family at any time in their life, all right? No exclusions. It does help if you're a handcuff, all right? Or a misfit. That helps a little. But all are welcome. A family who lives through the music, spirit, and community of Metallica. We're all together now. We're all Metallica family here tonight. Are you alive? How does it feel to be alive? These are the tales of Metallica from a nudge so dedicated to tell the world of the band that he took a career in radio, which gives him the power to play the horseman for the masses and speak of Metallica's tales. Oh, holy crap. I know every song that they've played and worshipped them and all that thing. And nobody's gonna f sit down and tell me what Metallica's about or how it's supposed to be. A nudge so blessed, he scored one of only 250 Wherever I May Roam black tickets, where he and the family roamed all across the U.S. on the Worldwide Tour. From high atop Frogs Mountain, dominating the Cincy Airways, this is Nudge with the Tales of Metallica Nudgecast. Hey guys, let's get out there, let's blow the roof off this place even though it's already been blown off. Let's kick some ass, they love us so much. We're gonna have a great time tonight. Welcome into the stream of Metallica Consciousness. It's good to have you here, Met family. Welcome to episode two of Tales of Metallica. I'm Nudge. Today's tale is going to be about, about my experience seeing S&M 2 in theaters. But before we get to that, you heard the good news, right? Yeah, Metallica playing Sonic Temple and Louder Than Life. And not just one night, they are doing two. So it is going to be a fantastic 2020 festival season. Hopefully you get those tickets. Last time Metallica played uh, Sonic Temple, sold out! So you don't want to miss that. <laughs> I can't believe two freaking nights in a three-day weekend. Uh, also, some uh, semi-bad news. James Hetfield went into rehab recently, went back because uh, he was struggling with his addictions. But with all this news, I think it was just more maintenance and uh, getting a control on life. You know, with addiction, you're never over it. So if they're releasing this news, then James Hetfield has to be in a mindset that it's going to be a good 2020. Because you can't cancel when you're the main attraction for festivals. So let's get together right now in this stream of Metallica consciousness and send some love to Papa Het. Do it however you want. Positive energy, prayers. Ready? Just think of a good thought and send it to Hetty. Go! All right. And uh, we'll all do a collective yeah here. You ready? You go yeah. Three, two, one. Yeah! Oh, it's, it's a great time. Hey, speaking of Sonic Temple, I got to go to my friend's first Metallica show there at Sonic Temple a couple years ago. My bestie and often producer at festivals when we're in the media tent leslie she's an amazing woman and we got to spend the weekend together and it and the cherry on top was metallica she got to see just how crazy i get and when i tell you crazy i mean crazy <laughs> even watching snm2 i got crazy there i treated it like a concert i didn't sit on my hands but uh let's check in with what i am calling met messages Hey everybody, what's up? This is Leslie Wesley calling in with my favorite Metallica moment, and that would have to be May of 2017. Rock on the Range, Columbus, Ohio. Three days of awesome, kick-ass bands. Metallica headlining the whole thing on Sunday night, and it almost didn't happen. 
Sunday was just storms after storms, torrential downpours. Wasn't sure if Metallica was even going to take the stage, but the Met family, in true Met family fashion, stood their ground out there in the middle of the stadium, ready to ride that rail with tarps over their head, withstanding all the torrential downpours. And just in time, the rain and the storm cleared up for Metallica to take the stage. And man, did they storm that stage. And it was probably the best Metallica show that I had ever seen, not only because it was my first time getting to see them, but I got to be there with my best friend, Nudge, and he just makes that hype of the show just escalate to over 10. Metallica no more than ended their show on that Sunday, and the storms just started right up again. That only goes to show that even Mother Nature makes time for Metallica. Oh, and it was a good time with Leslie. Hopefully, I will be doing it again in May at Sonic Temple with her. And uh, we'll create some more memories together. So this is episode two of Tales of Metallica. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to talk about S&M 2. I caught it in theaters with some Met family. Uh, on Wednesday, oh God, man, it was amazing to be in a theater and seeing Metallica on the big screen and hearing the symphony and all the craziness. I thought S and M two was much better than the original S and M. I thought it had more of an edge. I loved that they played something from every album. Yes, Saint Anger, Death Magnetic, all covered. And I gotta say, two of my favorites from S and M two. The Day That Never Comes, and Halo on Fire. Oh, melted me. Now, before the screening, you you instantly get your heartstrings tugged because they did a little video on All Within My Hands, which is Metallica's uh, foundation to help feed the hungry. Uh, It was really good. I mean, I had some tears. Then the band comes on and gives us a little introduction where even Mr. Headfield was like, look... There are some passionate people that are going to be in your theater. People are going to get up. They're going to make some noise. They might headbang, and it's okay. I can't believe it. He gave me permission to be the nudge that I am at a Metallica show. (laughs) And uh, I was a little bit reserved at first. I was in my seat. I kind of, by the end of uh, Call to Cthulhu, I was really going uh, hard. And then luckily, nobody else in the theater was really moving. And then these people came in from the second screening. They came over because their screening was boring. People were sitting there, saw me and decided, oh, it's okay to get a little wild. And then, because they're standing down there in between the lower and upper sections, I go and join them. The party kicked off right there. I think by the end of the first half, we were going nuts. We were yelling and drinking beers, and it was a real concert feel. I hope we didn't annoy people. I talked to a couple there, and they didn't get distracted by us. And it was really cool because the people got into it. There were two ladies in the very back row who were going nuts. I think, you know, the Met family comes together and uh, celebrates. So I hope you enjoyed your screening of S&M 2 if you went. I, I, it was just a perfect set list. For the two hours we got, two and some change, I think. I don't know. I I was kind of (laughs) buzzed. But, uh, yeah, these conductors were insane. People were crying during the anesthesia bass solo. They played the whole thing live, and it was with a celloist. Just a single cellist out there rocking and pulling on the heartstrings. It sounded great. The San Francisco Symphony was amazing. The conductors uh, were a lot of fun to watch. It was kind of weird that they had no pyro, but uh, it was an intimate setting. They didn't have a barrier around the orchestra and the band. People could have ran and tackled the band, but they didn't. I knew people on the floor who were standing second row and around the front row, and they just said it was amazing. And uh, I highly recommend you check out S&M 2. 
when it comes out on Blu-ray, they haven't announced that, but you know it is. I hope on the bonus features that they have both shows on there. I mean, they're the same show, but damn it. I want both nights because that's the kind of Metallica fan I am. I loved it that there was something from every album featured in the movie because, uh, you know, St. Anger and Death Magnetic get overlooked a lot. Unforgiven 3 sounded amazing with the orchestra intro. The boys looked on it. The sound was great. The mix was great. S&M 2. And I hope you caught it. This has been Tales of Metallica. If you have a tale, remember to get a hold of me. Nudge at WEBN.com. Episode 3 will be coming your way soon. Hey, you rock hard, rock local, and stay in the stream of Metallica consciousness. Thanks very much, man. We'll see you around. Thank you, good night.